From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Hi, Patsy. What's in your mind? Had your fortune told lately? Nope, but I don't think I want to. The last time it came true. Oh, what was it? Well, this Madame Gaga went into a transom or whatever you call it. And... Oh, trans boys, if you didn't know. Yeah, anyhow, she told me I was going to become an insurance investigator. And I've been stuck with it ever since. <laughs> sad, sad. But now, how'd you like to try your hand as a psychic investigator? Sure. What do I do? Uh, drop over, will you? I'm on my way. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the matter of the medium. Well done. Expense account item one, 115. Taxi to the office of Pat McCracken at Universal. I hadn't seen Pat since he'd ruined my Southern California vacation by insisting I tie it in with the Jolly Roger matter in the Lamar case, where my expense account, for some uh, strange reason, came out to a right nice figure. I've even included the case of V.O. that I'd sent him for having handed me those investigations. So I didn't know whether he was going to be nice to me or to rub my nose in the dirt. As it turned out, he didn't know either. Now, I don't quite know whether this is going to be another soft touch for that expense account of yours or a completely crazy one or real rough. <laughs> Tommy Green seems to think the latter, though I don't see why particularly. Yeah, who's Tommy Green? Mid-Eastern life down in New York. Oh, but just bill me as usual. Sure, okay. Now, Tommy says he's run into this sort of thing before, but not on so big a scale. That's why he's worried about it. Pat, you still haven't told me what. Oh, <laughs> Now, one of his clients happens to be a sweet young thing named Carol Sharp, 26 or 7, beautiful, badly spoiled. Mm, I love him that way. What? Uh, nothing. Go on, go on. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, she lives alone in a swank penthouse in the East 50s down there in New York, playgirl. Tommy holds a $110,000 policy on her. Straight life. Beneficiary? Her family, mother, and a couple of kid brothers. No father? No. no. The others live over in Machunk, PA. That's where her father made the dough that keeps her in the penthouse and keeps the others living well in the old family man. So, what's the problem? Somebody threatening her life? I don't know, Johnny. It depends on what you mean by threatening. She just requested Tommy to change beneficiaries. What's so unusual about that? Well, one of them is to be a man named Tony Ricardo for 30000 oh, oh, so she's fallen for the guy and is making the uh, nice gesture. Uh, maybe. We don't know yet. The other is a so-called medium... Madam Celia something. Uh-uh. I've heard it before. Turn the family fortune over to me and I'll get in touch with dear departed Papa. That's what it looks like from here. She's being took. But how could it be any of our business? Uh, last time Tommy was requested to change a beneficiary to a medium, his hale and hearty young client suddenly turned up dead. And they pinned it on the medium? Mm-hmm. Apparently this sort of thing goes on quite a bit. So it has Tommy worried, so he asked for you. All right, just what's he want me to do? What do you want to do? Break out the old crystal ball, Pat, and we'll see. Expense account item two, transportation, Hartford to New York, and the offices of Mid-Eastern, where Tommy Green turned out to be a mild-mannered, thoroughly likable, successful insurance broker. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Glad you could make it. I do, Mr. Green. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. I suppose Pat McCracken's told you what's on my mind. Only that you think one of your clients is being taken for the proverbial sleigh ride by some spiritualist. As you no doubt know, Mr. Dollar, spiritualism is a recognized, well-established religion. Sure, of course. However, as in any other, there are charlatans. And some of these mediums, as they call themselves, take literally millions of dollars every year from people by trickery, by producing weird manifestations that appear to be genuinely supernatural. Tommy, I know what you mean. My own mother took a beating from one of those phonies when I was just a kid. You know, promised messages from father after he died, and at 25 bucks a try. Wow. No wonder you're suspicious of them. And especially of one Madam Celia Morgana Morgana. Have you seen this, uh, Madam? No, but I believe you'd better. Mm-hmm. Have you changed what's her name, Carol Sharp's policy yet? No, but I'm afraid I can't stall her much longer. And you're afraid that once you do change it, Carol ain't going to be long for this world, huh? It's happened before, darling. Yeah. Well, I, I can't just barge in on this Madam Morgana Morgana, announce that I'm an insurance investigator, and then another... 
Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what's the name of this other beneficiary? Tony Ricardo. Yeah, who is he? All I know is what Carol's told me. Love affair? Yeah. He sounds like a playboy. They do a lot of nightclubbing together. Money? I don't know. Family? I don't know that either. But he's in for 30 of the 110,000 if anything happens to her. If we change the policy. How are you going to start? Well, if this Carol Sharp is all Pat McCracken says she is, this case could have a very pleasant beginning. I stuck around with Tommy Green long enough to listen to him verify what Pat had said about Carol's family, wealth, etc. Take a look at a snapshot of her and get her address. Item 3180, taxi to the Bell Towers at 614 East 52nd Street. A magnificent modern apartment hotel at the edge of the East River. Real swank. The place even had its own private docks with several well-kept cruisers tied up and even a small seaplane. Pat, I warn you, this expense account ain't gonna be small. Yes, may I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I'd uh, like a small apartment for a few days. Are you alone, sir? Yes. Well, we still have a small five-room penthouse suite for $1,500 a month. Huh? Uh, with complete maid service, of course. Oh, of course. And on a minimum one-year lease, of course. Look, all I want is a bedroom, living room type of thing, and I may be here only a week or so. Oh, well, in that case, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do for you unless... Tell me, sir, do you have any recommendations from any of our tenants? Look, I'm an insurance investigator. Here, my card. Uh oh And I want something as close as possible to Miss Carol Sharp's apartment. But I don't want to have to rob Fort Knox. Private Nats. investigator, did you say? Yeah, that'll do. Oh, dear. Surely Miss Sharp can't be in any kind of... Well, I mean, think what it would mean to our reputation, uh, Mr., uh, Mr., oh, Mr. Dollar. Stop worrying, will you? She isn't in any kind of trouble, yet... But for reasons that, uh, well, they don't particularly concern you, I need to be as close to her as I can. Ah, uh -huh, what a pleasant thought. And if for only the same I... reason, I don't want her to know what my business here is. Of course. Believe me, Mr. Dollar, I'm the very soul of discretion. Good. See that you stay that way. Now, have you got a room or two for me? Oh, uh, let me see. Now, she's in penthouse A on floor 12. Hmm. There is a two-room on 10, very nice, at 325 a week. <laughs> With uh, complete service, of course. Okay, I'll take it. Very well. Just sign this card, please. And, uh, oh, dear, I'm afraid I must have a week in advance. Oh, oh, sure, sure. What's a measly 325 bucks? When the two bellboys who carried up my two bags at a buck apiece settled me in 1013, I must admit the place looked almost worth a 10. Tastefully furnished, spit and polished clean, and with a plate glass panorama view of the bustling East River. Yeah, I wish for a moment that I could afford this sort of lodging. First thing I did was telephone to an old pal. Detective Division, Sergeant Singer. Hey, look, Sarge. I need a rundown on a dirty crook. Well, who's speaking, please? He's going around acting like an insurance stick, but he's a crook. Oh, what's his name? Dollar, Johnny Dollar. And I tell you, that punk is as crooked as they come. Don't go any further. We know all about him. We got word here in New York that we'll put a stake out on him the minute we spot his hideout. That copper I can give you. <laughs> Good, Johnny. Just where you staying. <laughs> Hi, you old reprobate. I'm at the Towers. He's 52nd. The Towers? Expense account, huh? How'd you guess? I want to see you. In exactly 21 minutes, I'll punch the time clock and be over. Room 1013. Right. Oh, and uh, be sure it's with soda. Easy, boy. Give you any encouragement, you'll want to name the brand of scotch. <laughs> Item 4, 1220. One bottle of scotch and setups for two. Sure, Johnny. Knew her from when I was doing the nightclub beat. And she's lived in town for quite a while, huh? Yeah, a couple of years at least. How much do you know about her, Randy? Hmm, not much. Uh, she's loaded. Throws her money around like it's confetti. Yeah, I figured that when I found her staying here. Father left it to her. Hmm, coal miner, wasn't he? Owned a big colliery in Frankville, Pennsylvania, somewhere near Machunk. Well, it must have paid off good in the old days. Uh, but tell me, what's... Uh, uh, you want to give me a refill? Yeah, sure. Ever hear of a Madame Senior Morgana Morgana? Ha! I've chased that blousy old phony from one end of the island to the other. I look into the crystal ball, and I see into the past, the present, the future, and into your pocketbook. Yeah, and, man, she could. I think she's operating somewhere over on the Jersey side now. Oh, yeah. Thanks. But she's still operating. Operating with real class. Last time we picked her up and kicked her out. How do you mean? Nice apartment over here on the east side. Classy clientele. Mm -hmm. Hey, is uh, Carol Sharp hooked by her? Pure so. Just how does she work? Well, the usual way the phonies do. Goes into a trance, writhes around like a seasick rattlesnake, uh, then gives with the voices. Voices? You know, speaks with the tongues of the departed. 
Hey, look, where's the money angle, Mr. Well, she makes like the trances cause her great agony of body and mind. Starts with the pitch about doctor bills. And the more clients can afford, the more they pay. And they don't get wise? Yeah, she's smart. Works it like a serial story, you know. Continued next week? No, I don't know. Brief me. Well, at each seance, she tells them just enough to whet their appetite for more. Leads right up to the next hot bit of information, has them hanging on every word, then bingo, the trance is over. Ah. Uh-huh. However... If you come back next week when I recover my strength. <laughs> so they pay her off and they're back a week later to play games with her again. I don't know. It seems pretty obvious to me. Well, that's because you've never attended a seance run by an artist at it. And hey, why don't you? I think I will. I'll see what I can dig up for you. You mean there are still some going on around town? Some. <laughs> Dozens, hundreds probably. Kick them out of one place, they move to another. Unless you can tie a serious rap on them. Which reminds me, Tommy Green told yeah, me... Yeah, yeah, I handled that one myself. A Madame Gabor Chernarsky. Got a sweet old man to sign over his fortune and had him knocked off. Oh, that's a dirty racket. Yeah, religion, science, the professions, they all leave an open door to the racketeers, I guess. Okay, set up a seance for me, Randy. In the meantime, yeah? run me a make on Tony Ricardo, will you? Ricardo? Yeah, he's the other one Carol Sharp wants to name as a beneficiary. Besides the medium? Yeah, beneficiary of a whopping big life policy. Okay, good, Johnny. I'll call you later. When I took my time showering and changing clothes, I racked my brain trying to cook up a smooth way to meet Carol Sharp. Under no circumstances did I want her to suspect the reason behind my interest in her, at least not for the present. Requisite number one, then, meet the gal. I was just tying my time when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Uh, Randy, Johnny. Oh, hi, Rand. Set up a date with a medium? Yeah, for tonight, but that's not what I'm calling about. Johnny, I could write a book for you. Huh? On Tony Ricardo. And I don't think you'd like it. Have you seen him yet? No, but I will, as soon as I can locate him. Well, if he finds out what you're working on, he'll locate you. Fine. Yeah, just be sure you see him first. And that you're carrying a gun. Thanks, Randy. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, sometimes the best laid plans can take a terrible beating when a lovely girl steps into the picture. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank you.